Hello, Keith Rock here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we are back to working on the Tally Ho Capstan project, and we have been working on making a new central shaft for the, the, the capstan drum or the windlass drum, whatever you want to call it, the part of the chains and the boat ropes and stuff wrap around. Uh, that's going to be running up through the center of the capstan, and there's some bronze bushings in that drum that fits over this. It'll be rotating on. One of the unique features about this particular piece is, is that it has some tapers that are machined on both ends of the shaft. These tapers go down and uh, the, the long one on the bottom goes into the bottom piece, is keyed in place. Uh, anytime you have a taper, it's kind of like if you're working in a machine shop or work around equipment, you've heard of a Morse taper, it's a drill bit or something like that where it has that tapered shank. When you put it up inside, if you got two very good matching tapers, they will stick together very, very strongly. And that's the idea here. We, we're gonna be putting these together. Those tapers are gonna be drawn together with a bolt on the end. There is a key in there to make sure they don't twist, but really just pulling those together should be an extremely strong uh, mating surface. So we're gonna have to cut a taper on the top and the bottom. The, the one in the bottom again goes into the base and then there's a cap that goes on top of the capstan. It is also keyed and it is tapered as well. And we need to be cutting these tapers to match uh, at least one of them. We gotta match the existing taper that's in the base. Now for the top, we're gonna to actually be machining that matching taper uh, over on the lathe at a later time. Uh, so, but anyway, we got to make sure that we're getting these tapers. Now, I've already gone in and measured everything over here. We got a video that we did on measuring the, the capstan uh, shaft here previously where we figured up the tapers and they were extremely close to one another for the top and the bottom. And for all intent and purposes, we're just going to make them the same taper. Since we've got to make the matching taper to go on the top, there's no reason to have to change it by just a couple of thousand. I imagine that when it was new, it was the same taper on both ends, but this uh, shaft that we're measuring over here is over 100 years old. It's got a lot of rust and pitting in it, so it's really difficult to get extremely accurate measurements, particularly on the, the top piece. The bottom piece was pretty protected, so I was, I was, I'm pretty comfortable with measuring that on the top one. Not as much, but we're gonna go with the same taper. And that taper that we're gonna be cutting is 104 thousandths per inch. So if you think about this, if you think about a right triangle that has the base is one inch long, the other side's gonna be 104 uh, thousandths high, and then that angle that we get there is gonna be the taper. And we're not, I'm not even gonna calculate what the, the taper or the angle is, it doesn't really matter. I just know the rise and the run. That's all I need to know to be able to do it. And again, that taper is 104 thousandths per inch. So we're gonna be setting up over here on my Monarch Lay. This does have a taper attachment on it. The taper attachment basically lets you set the taper that you wanna cut, and it will follow that taper as it's cutting. So instead of cutting straight like the lathe normally does, when you get it in the mode of using the taper attachment, there's a guide back here on the back. You'll see it in just a minute. Once you get that guide set to the angle that you want, uh, it will follow that guide rather than follow the, the being parallel to the ways. So we're gonna get that set up right now and uh, get these tapers cut out. So let's get, get it done. So I got you kind of looking at the back side of the lathe because the taper attachment is really mostly back here on this back side. So when you lift these covers up, what you'll see is there's this rod right here and this is adjustable. We can set this to whatever angle we want to, whatever taper we want to. And again, as the lathe is cutting, instead of going to cutting parallel to the ways in the bed of the machine, we're gonna be cutting parallel to whatever taper or angle this bar is set to. Now to change the mode for the lathe from basically running in the going up and down, there's a, you basically just have to loosen up the nut in here. This nut right now, when you crank the handle on the front, it moves this in and out. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna actually be um, tightening this, uh, actually tightening this nut up. And what that's gonna do is connect it to a piece that rides in there. So now whenever we move the lathe back and forth, it's gonna follow that rod once we clamp that down so it moves. So let me get a wrench. We're gonna tighten this up. So first things first here again, this nut that I'm talking about is right here. This is going to basically Instead of allowing this to clamp back, ride back and forth, we're going to be locking it down. 
So now when I crank my handle over here, it actually isn't going to move. But what it is doing, it is linking with this piece up here, this rod we're gonna clamp down so that it stays stationary. And as we move it, it is at a taper and it's going to follow that rod. So whenever we move the carriage in and out, it's gonna follow that. First thing we need to do though is tighten up the nut that holds that in place. And I've moved you back a little bit. You can see here is the rod that is gonna fix that. So we're just gonna tighten this up. This is just a clamp that's gonna clamp down onto the bed of the ways. And again, now this is all connected over here. I wanna make sure these are nice and tight so that it doesn't rot back and forth. And now this is gonna stay stationary. And when I move to carry, it's just gonna slide on that as you'll see here in just a minute. Gonna clamp that down good and tight. So now this bar is gonna be stay stationary. And when I move the carriage, notice that it's sliding up and down on that. I don't know if you can tell or not in the video, but that is at a little bit of an angle. And we're gonna be adjusting that to get the taper that we need. So according to our measurements we did before, again, the taper that we're looking for is 104 thousandths per inch. But the taper that we measured is the included taper. So if you think about, you know, if you got a tape, Straight sides is straight up and down. When you have a taper, both sides are gonna be tapering in. And when we measure that, we were measuring the included taper, the included angle, which is basically both sides of that. Now on the lathe, we're basically only cutting one half of that angle or that taper. So if you think about it, the back side is running straight up and down and this side is gonna be running at an angle. So the taper that we need to set up on the taper attachment is gonna be half of the included angle. So we'll do that again. Got the, uh, got the angle, all right? It's gonna be half of that. So we're gonna be cutting that in half. So what we need to set up on the taper attachment is half of the 104 thousandths per inch, which is gonna be 52 thousandths per inch. Hopefully that makes sense to you uh, because again, when we're cutting on the lathe, we're when we're moving metal off of one side, but that metal is rotating. So in essence, we're removing metal off of both sides, but we're only cutting on one side. So same, same principle as when you feed the, the, the tool bit in by 10 thousandths, you're cutting 20 thousandths off the diameter because you're really removing it off of both sides. Same thing with the angle here. We're cutting half of the angle off of one side, but it's cutting the other half over on the other side as well because your part is revolving as you cut. Hopefully that makes sense. Let's go over here and start working on getting that taper set up. So I want you to make sure you're understanding what's going on here. Um, again, we can't use this handle at all right now. It is locked in place. I'm gonna turn this basically straight in and we'll have to make our feed using the compound uh, when we get to that point. But what I want you to see, and hopefully you'll be able to see it, but as the carriage moves down, this is gonna be coming out. It's moving toward me because it's following that rod. So it is moving, but it's moving at that taper. When we go back, same thing. I don't know if you can see it or not, but this is actually moving in and out. i tell you what, I'll put an indicator on it so you can see it. I'll put a dial indicator here. All right, we got a dial indicator. It's mounted here on the carriage that's moving on the ways. And then we've got the indicator pointing to the cutter, which is on the cross slide that is moving with the taper attachment. So as we move the table in, you're seeing that dial is moving and it's coming towards me as we're going. So there's gonna be a little bit of backlash. So when you go back, you gotta kinda get your backlash out. Same thing when you go to the end of your cut, we have to make sure we get that backlash out so we start but you can see that is moving in at whatever angle we're doing. So I got you zoomed in on the digital readout here where you can see what's going on. So what I'm gonna do is I've already, well, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just crank this over. We're gonna go all the way to the back and I'm gonna bring it forward until I start seeing those numbers move. I got the backlash out of the lathe. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zero both the X and Z axis. 
So again, what we're looking for is 52 thousandths per inch. So when I move my z-axis one inch, I want my x-axis to read 52 thousandths. Let's see where this was the last time we used this, last time I set this taper attachment up. I don't even remember what it was on. So I'm just gonna move that z-axis one inch right there. And look at there, we're 53.2, we're, we're almost where we need to be. So uh, I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna re-zero everything out. We'll dial in an inch again. Fifty-two and eight ten thousandths. <laughs> you know, every now and then, even a blind squirrel finds an acorn. We're shooting for fifty-two thousandths. I'm eight tenths over that, and I moved it a little bit. But I mean, it is, it's, it's, it's almost perfect. Evidently, last time I set this up, I set up the same taper. That must be a fairly standard taper. I haven't figured out what that is per foot or whatever, but. Uh, whatever I use this last for, that's what we did. And eight tenths per inch, uh, yeah. I might try to bump it around and see if I can make it a little bit better. I'm, I'm probably we're gonna regret it, but I want you guys to see how we adjust it, so we'll show you that. So guys, to adjust this taper attachment, what you need to do is, is move this bar. And you got a clamp on this side. There's a clamp over here on the bottom on this side. This top one is on a little rack and pinion where you can kind of bump it around. And I just came in here and I just I barely loosened these up. I didn't even totally loosen them up. And I just tapped this thing ever so slightly. I went back and measured my taper again and it's actually was 104.3. Three ten thousand. So really, I need to be at fifty-two point one and a half to be exactly matching that taper over there. So I'm really only about a half a thou off of where I need to be. I'm probably messing up by even messing with this. But we're going we're gonna to try to bump it in a little bit better, just because I'm a perfectionist and I can't keep from it. All right, I've been sitting here bumping it around for the last ten minutes, and I'm at. 52.4, I'm supposed to be at 52, one and a half. Guys, I can't get any better than that. In fact, the repeatability when I do this a couple of times, it's running within a couple of tenths and it's running a little bit lower, a little bit higher. That's as close as I can get it. Uh, so we're, we're going with it. Probably shouldn't have ever messed with it to begin with. I, I don't know that I really made it any better than what it was, but I had to try. So I think we have our taper ready to go. So uh, next we'll go ahead and start cutting. I will note that if you don't have a digital readout on your lathe like I have on mine, you can still do this with a couple of dial indicators. So again, you just have one dial indicator on your cross slide. You put a second dial indicator on the carriage. You move the carriage one inch on the dial indicator. You read the dial indicator up here to read how far it moved and you're accomplishing the exact same thing. So, you know, don't feel like if you don't have a digital readout that you can't make these adjustments. A couple of uh, dial indicators accomplishes the same thing. Again, old school, um, and it's just as good, just as accurate. Uh, and this is the way probably most of them were set up back in the day. All right, let's, uh, let's see if we can cut a taper and uh, start trying to get this thing done. Just a quick comment uh, on the, the taper. Again, I was measuring 104 point, about one and a half over there on, on using my, my, my micrometer, my taper micrometer. Uh, and usually tapers are either expressed in uh, inches per inch or inches per foot. When I take that number that we got over there, 104.15, 0.104, and I multiply that times 12, 12 inches in a foot, it comes out to 1.2498. So almost exactly an inch and a quarter per foot. So I'm 
positive now that the original taper was inch and a quarter per foot. That's a nominal size. And uh, if you do the inch and a quarter put 1.25, divide that by 12, the number should be 0.10416. So, uh, you know, that's pretty darn close to where we were and almost pretty darn close to exactly what we have here in the, in the digital readout. We're gonna be close enough uh, for the tapers that we're cutting. Uh, so let's get in here and uh, see if we can make some actual cuts. The machining gear here. I'm just gonna kind of come in here. I've got my cross slide set to 90 degrees. So basically that's my in and out there. I'm gonna back up, take the backlash out. We'll come back in. And I'm just gonna make a, tell you what, we'll do a, uh, we'll do 20 thousandths. Or excuse me, that's 10 thousandths. 20 thousandths off the diameter. And we're just gonna kinda cut across there. Now it's gonna start feeding, but as it cuts, Remember, it's moving towards me, so it's going to get lighter and lighter and lighter, and eventually it's going to come out of the cut. Now, because of the backlash, when I, if I try to go back, it's, it will cut into it, so I'm going to mark. I'm at 105 right now. I'm going to actually pull it out. We'll go back, take the backlash out of the rig again, come back up. I'm going to go back to my 105 number. And I'm going to feed in another ten thousandths. And we're going to make another pass. do that one more time and I'm going to get my taper micrometer and we're going to verify everything. Take another pass here. stop there. I'm going to go get my taper micrometer and we'll come over here and we're going to measure that and check it out. I'm going to loosen up this back piece. I need to adjust this to kind of fit this particular piece. I'm going to start by just kind of running that up by hand. We'll tighten our piece back up again and now All right, and my pads are touching. Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make that just ever so slightly smaller. There we go. All right, I'm touching on both sides on the on the back side there. We'll come in here with our micrometer head. We'll read on this side and pull it off and let me read what we got and we're reading about 104 and a half so uh, yeah we're right in the ballpark of where we need to be so i think our taper is going to be just fine uh, that's reading exactly where we want to be all right we are ready to move on and uh, continue cutting this taper so When I get all the way back to the shoulder, I've still got some diameter to cut out of it. So uh, we'll just start paying attention to what we're doing here and shoot for that diameter that we're shooting for. About to look at my print again. I think I'm gonna shoot for the small end 
being on size, if I remember right, an inch and three quarter, but I'll double check that. All right. We'll come in here and uh, put a pretty strong chamfer on that one. Come up here and chamfer this one as well. All right. Okay, we're set up now to cut the taper on the long end here. So we got everything flipped over. I got this end ch uh, chucked up in the three jaw chuck. We've got it uh, running true using dial indicator. Got the steady rest in here to give us some additional support in that center section. And the tail stock, of course, is supporting the uh, uh, live center. And I got my taper attachment. I had to make some adjustments to get it in the right range here, but I think we are ready to go again. So uh, we will commence to turning this one out just like we did the other one. Uh, no, no changes to the taper, same taper, uh, just different dimensions we got to go to. So let's uh, knock it out. All right, kind of same as before here. We will uh, kind of come in here, take our backlash out. And start the turning. So we probably are going to come up to the shoulder on this pass, I think. If not, we're going to be really close to it. Uh, then whenever we get there, we're going to stop and start taking some measurements. So we've just about got this taper cutting the whole length, but I do know i got a little bit of the diameter still left to cut off of it. Let's see if we make it all the way to the shoulder. Yeah, we're going to do it. Here we go. All right. 80 on the dial. I'm going to back that off. Go past and back in again to get that backlash out. Go back to my starting point. Let me get my calipers. I'm going to start making some measurements here. So according to the blueprint, the uh, small end needs to be 1.725. And we are at 1.95, so we've still got about 200 thousandths to come off the diameter. Well, guys, I think we've got this pretty much where we want it to be at. I, I want to take it over and actually test fit it into the, the socket that's going to fit in and just kind of see how it's going to, going to look, go. But uh, according to the measurements, we should be where we need to be. So... Um, I think I'm going to relieve this edge down here just a little bit. And then we're going to take this out of the lathe and start doing some test fitting. I also want to test these bearing journals over on the bearing, on the drum and make sure those are going to fit as well. So uh, let's go ahead and pull this thing out. I'll, I'm going to relieve that edge right there and I'm going to pull this thing out and we'll check her out. So let's take a look at what we got here. This is the new shaft. It is over here in the base. And uh, I can I just dropped it down in there, and yeah, there's hardly any wiggle in this thing at all. I think we nailed the taper. We still got to tighten this up, so there's going to be a nut on the bottom that will draw all this tight. So it's not tight right now. Down here, this uh, little ledge is just a little bit proud, but again, by the time we tighten it up, I think that's going to be pretty much kind of we want it to be just above this little casting here. So I think we got that right where we want it. That's where that bearing is going to run. Let me zoom you in and show you that. So you can kind of see right down here. It is just a little bit proud. But again, by the time we pull it all tight, I think that's going to pull out. So I'm going to kind of roll this over. You can see the bottom uh, where the, the thread and nut's going to go. So we've still got to thread this, obviously. and But that nut's going to pull on there. And when we tighten that up, it's going to suck it up. And it is, you know, not quite flush with the bottom. We don't want it. We want to have some room for that 
nut to actually be able to tighten. We don't want it to run out. So I think we're good there as well. So this looks really good. I'm happy with that. Now I want to check my bearings uh, to see if we got good clearance on the, on the drum. So let's go check that out. All right, let's uh, see how this goes. So the shaft is going to come up through here. Gonna get this lined up from the other end. Look at there, look at there, look at there. Oh yeah. That. Should just have at least a little bit of clearance in there. We measured about three thou. That's just for oil. I check the other side. Same. I think we're good. I think those dimensions came out just right. Just what we want. All right. Wow, this is coming together. And here are the two shafts next to one another. We got the new shaft and the old shaft. And I think it's gonna work. So we still, what's left to do to this shaft? We've got to thread both ends. We got to cut the slot here for the key. We got to cut a slot down here for a key. Um, and I think we're done, but I think for this video, which was focusing on the tapers, we're going to call it quits. We're going to come back in now and uh, we'll do the threading and the milling to finish this thing up in, in the next video. But coming along nicely, uh, we are just about through with this and uh, it is really, really, really turning out nice. Well, guys, that was a lot of work uh, and nerve wracking, kind of a one shot deal here, you know, this piece of steel was not cheap and the thought of scrapping it uh, was not a pleasant one. So fortunately we didn't have to go down that road, but huh, I'm glad to kind of have this behind me. We are uh, still got a little bit more work to do to it to be totally finished, but I think we're in the short rows now. So that will get these last couple of things knocked out. And we move on to the next uh, step with this capstan project. Still a lot of work to do, uh, but we are slowly making progress one step at a time. Guys, with that, that's going to be a wrap. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments are always greatly appreciated. Uh, really helps feed the algorithms over on YouTube when you leave those comments in there. A uh, big, huge thank you to those that support the site financially through Patreon, PayPal. There's links down in the description below. So if you want to help out there, it really enables me to be able to take the time to shoot these videos and bring them to you. And uh, big thank you to those that subscribe as well. If you haven't already, hit that button. Uh, please, please, please. So with that, guys, we're going to sign off. We'll catch you on the next video. Again, thanks for watching.